Welcome to Fishing with Tom Richards. Brought to you by Zach's Furniture Showroom. Always quality furniture, always the lowest price. giant fish, but this is a pretty good fish. Hey everybody, I'm Tom Richards, and I want to welcome you to this week's, oh yeah, there he is, good looker, come here buddy, oh, back down he goes, <laughs> I want to welcome you to this week's show, come up here buddy, get back up here, you come up where I want, get him up here again. Good looking striper. I want a crankbait. Love catching them on them artificial. Come over here, little guy. Let me see if I can get my finger in your jaw. As you can see, we're going to be striper fishing today. Come up here, little buddy. Good looking start. You got my pliers handy. That's one thing you want to have if you're going to fish for these things. He need a pretty fish. Look at that. And we'll get him right back in the water. Turn him loose. See if he won't grow up to be a, about a 30 pounder. Yeah, thrashing in though. Let's go. There he went. Right back down to the bottom. Perkins presents Dinner with No Reservations. The shrimp boats are on the way. They're coming into the bay. La, and that means Perkins Shrimp la, Feast is back again. La, 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 and we're piling on the plump golden shrimp, fries, coleslaw, and onion rings, all for a song. Dine out tonight with no reservations. Perkins, breakfast, dinner, and everything in between. Furnishing your home is an investment that deserves careful consideration. That's why Zach's Furniture offers you only the most respected, time-tested manufacturers in the industry. Thomasville, Broyhill, Drexel, Berkland, and a whole lot more with certified, experienced home furnishing consultants and designers on staff to help you with this important decision. Never pushy, always helpful, with your needs in mind. Let Zach's help add a great new look to your home. Zach's Furniture in Boone's Creek, Bristol, and downtown Kingsport. Where is everybody? The systems are down and everybody took a break. We really need a professional computer man. I'll call tomorrow's micro. Yes, we can't have your computer repaired in 24 hours. Would you like to bring it in or shall we send out a technician? Tomorrow's Micro is an authorized dealer of IBM, NEC, Compact, and Toshiba. Tomorrow's Micro features a three-year warranty on new equipment and custom system design. Act now and get 90 days free financing at Tomorrow's Micro. You know, I have a lot of people ask me, Tom, how did you get started as a professional fisherman, your own TV show and whatnot? Well, the way I got started was a guide. And due to the fact that I have a lot of people asking me about the guide service, on a limited basis for the next few months, I'm going to take out some clients on guide trips. 
So if you'd be interested, give me a call. Remember, to catch a trophy, you need to hook an expert. And Tom Richards has 13 striper at over 50 pounds to his credit. Give him a call and arrange the fishing trip of your dreams. The high cost of health care? Everyone has a part in keeping it down. So we took what you like about Walmart and what you want in a pharmacy and put it right inside your Walmart store. The result? Walmart's pharmacy department. With professional service and the low price on every prescription. So next time, bring it here. Or ask your doctor to call. Walmart's pharmacy department. Your full service pharmacy. Right inside Walmart. Always the low price. Always. The number one and number two mattress manufacturers in America, Sealy Posturepedic and Simmons Beautyrest, are now reduced to an all-time low at Zach's Furniture for a limited time. You'll find Sealy Posturepedic and Simmons Beautyrest queen size sets reduced to an incredible $299 for the complete set. You heard it right, queen size Posturepedic or Beautyrest complete sets, only $299 for a limited time at Zach's. Zach's Furniture in Boone's Creek, Bristol and downtown Kingsport. What I've been doing, I'm casting off of this point out into about oh, 12, 15 foot of water. This bait will run down about eight foot deep. I'm skimming it right across that 12 foot zone, so I'm not casting at the bank. I'm casting out off of the bank like this. I'm bringing that bait right back parallel on the bank and keeping that bait in that 12 foot strike zone. That's where our fish are at. So if you can find where your strike zone is, in other words, where most of the fish are holding, it's going to result in a lot more fish for you if you keep your bait in the strike zone as much as possible. If I'm casting up toward the bank, doing this number, like that, when I start cranking, now my bait's in two, three, four, five, six, eight, 12. Now we're in the strike zone. Now we're right back out into 14, 15 foot of water. And there's how long our bait stayed in the strike zone. So we optimize the time that we're keeping that bait in the strike zone. And I guarantee you, it will result in more fish. If you'll try those things, that's something that I, of course, I learned that from uh, just fishing with so many different guys in tournaments and stuff. I normally would just plug away at a bank. But I've learned over the years fishing with so many different people that if you'll keep that bait in the strike zone as long as you can, it's going to result in more fish for you. And them striper are holding in here off of these points right now. You see, we're fishing on a, what I, I call this kind of rock most of the time, pea gravel. And these fish are holding in here off of that stuff, but it'll be particularly good on areas that have got red clay in conjunction with the pea gravel. And the reason for that is it gives you a transition point. The shed are moving into the areas where the clay is at. Now we've got an area like that right over here uh, beside the boat. We've got clay and then we've got rock on either side of it. And what you've got, the rock holds heat and the clay creates a, a smooth area in there. Those shed can find the things that they eat on more in those clay areas than they do on the rock. And late down in the evening, early in the morning especially, and we're right now, of course, we're not early in the morning anymore, but uh, just something else you can look for. I'm doing too much talking and not enough fishing. I've got out of position just a little bit. I need to get in here, get my boat swung around a little bit, and get back in that strike zone. Oh, there he is. Yeah. This is flat and been lasting. Probably end up being a cut down version. <laughs> this spot has lasted about 12, 15 minutes. All right. Yeah, he's about had it. He's ready to be brought into the boat. He has fought himself nearly out. I say that and get down here and get a big treble hook. Yeah, he's around a little bit now. He's hooked up every which way coming and going. 
he has really fought himself out. I think probably when they fight that way, I honestly don't think this fish would live. I don't think it'd even go down. Well, I broke two. Look at this, I broke two hooks off. One off the back, one off the front. There's one of them still stuck in his jaw. He was hooked up on the outside of the head. But I'll show you something here. Let me try anyway. I don't think this fish, well, we'll try. He may go down. Now, I already ate him around a little bit. Get by the tail here. I'm gonna work him back and forth. Oh yeah, he's starting to fight against me. That's good. Now these fish, a lot, one thing you gotta remember, they're resilient, you know. You can hurt him, watch him go away. There he goes, there he goes. Big guy, way to go. All right, I was worried about him. But remember, when you're thinking about these fish, you know, if you and I get cut, or if we get winded, and that's all, this is the same as him being winded. It's just like he went out and ran a 10 mile run. And if you've ever run one, you know what you feel like when you get through. You don't need to be disposed. Just give you a chance to recover, and you'll be around to run again. He'll be around to fight again, too. All right. Now let's take just a few minutes now away from the fishing. I have to invite you into my kitchen and we're gonna talk about a recipe that I've discovered for making striper jerky. Now, I'm gonna assume that you already know how to fillet a striper out. You know, the important thing is to cut all the red meat off of the, the, the flesh. So all we want is nice, thin, white meat. And once we get that, we're ready to start making our jerky. Okay, now, as you can see here, these are pretty good white fillets, good clean fillets. There's a little red meat here and there. If you can get all of it off, the more you get off, the better off you're gonna be. Cause those red spots like right here, they'll have a little strong taste to them sometimes. It's not bad and a lot of people like it. So you might try it both ways, you know, clean one this good and maybe leave a little red somewhere. What we wanna do with it then is we'll just take these fillets like this and I have pre-prepared a solution, a brine solution to put the fillets in. Now, first thing I want to do, uh, I get this solution from the Lure Jensen Company. It's a brine mix made especially for making jerky. I've got it mixed up good. All you do is take the packet of solution, put two quarts of water in, and then put your fillets into it. And we'll just put our fillets in, just like this. And as we put them in, try to keep them separated as much as you can. And we get these into the solution. Put them all in the same direction. That way they're not just lapping over each other. Like that right there. Now we've got our fillets in the solution. That has to set in the marinating sauce, whatever you want to call this. It's called a brine solution. And it needs to set it in anywhere from four to six hours. And you have to stir it occasionally. Just take a spoon or something, put in there, and stir it around like this. And like I say, you let that sit for four to six hours, and then you're ready to put it into your hydrator, or your dehydrator. Okay, now the brine solution, what this does is it cures the meat out. There's salts, spices, sugar, different things in this solution that Lure Jensen makes. That, and it just works as a preservative on the meat. So that when you dehydrate it, you can keep it for a few days up to several weeks before you actually eat it. That's the reason for having the brine solution to start with. Now what we want to do is put it in our dehydrator, but the first thing we've got to do is get the excess solution off the fillets. So we're assuming that these fillets have soaked now for anywhere from four to six hours, and we're taking them out and placing them on the towel to dry. And that's all you do is just get them out, lay them on the towel just like this. You don't leave them for a long time, you can lay them out and uh, once you get them to this point, we're not gonna get them all out. Uh, that should be enough right there to work with. I can take this end of the towel, fold it up, and just pat these fillets, just like this. That's all there is to it. They don't have to be totally dried. And at this point, we're ready to put them into the dehydrator. Okay, now at this point, let's see, I've got four shelves in the dehydrator. We don't have enough meat to fill all these shelves up, so we're gonna take a couple of them out. Now at this point, we just take these fillets, lay them on the dehydrator, just like this, you don't do anything special. The one thing that I would recommend you do, and I've already pre-treated this one, is take these little shells 
spray it down with Pam before you put your fillets on it. That way when you get ready to take them out, they don't stick to it and it's much easier to clean. You won't have near as much trouble cleaning it. And that, if you're like me, you don't enjoy doing that stuff. And we get the fillets in there. The one thing you don't want to do, actually I'm going to take one of these back out. These are going to be a lot better and I'll put another shelf in. If you don't let the fillets touch, it takes a, a lot longer for them to dry out if you let them touch. So we get them in there just like that. Now all we do is turn the dehydrator on and let it set for about four to six hours again and your jerky is going to be ready. And here's your finished product and there's what it looks like. And as you can see, I even use the little chunks and they make good jerky, so don't throw any of it away. Zach's Furniture brings you an incredible limited time offer on all quality Thomasville collections from Zach's exclusive Thomasville galleries. Choose from Collector's Cherry, East Hampton, Lake House, American Oak, and many other unique collections, and for a limited time, one half off. That's right, own the quality and craftsmanship of Thomasville Furniture at 50% off. Zach's Furniture, always bringing you premier home furnishings at prices you can afford. Zach's Furniture in Boone's Creek, Bristol, and downtown Kingsport. I'll tell you what happened. We came in to look for bicycle helmets, and the bicycle helmets that we wanted were up on a top shelf. And there was someone there working, and he, can you help me? And he immediately went and got a ladder, and was very friendly, and if there's anything else I can do, let me know. Try going to another discount store and finding someone who'll help you. I mean, they like go poof when you're in the area. They're just gone. In Walmart, everyone's been very helpful and, and, and quite, you know, kind. Perkins presents Dinner with No Reservations. The shrimp boats are on the way. They're coming into the bay. La, and that means Perkins Shrimp Feast is back again. And we're piling on the plump golden shrimp, fries, coleslaw, and onion rings. All for a song. Dine out tonight with no reservations. Perkins, breakfast, dinner, and everything in between. You know, I have a lot of people ask me, Tom, how did you get started as a professional fisherman, your own TV show and whatnot? Well, the way I got started was a guide. And due to the fact that I have a lot of people asking me about the guide service, on a limited basis for the next few months, I'm gonna take out some clients on guide trips. So if you'd be interested, give me a call. Remember, to catch a trophy, you need to hook an expert. And Tom Richards has 13 striper at over 50 pounds to his credit. Give him a call and arrange the fishing trip of your dreams. Furnishing your home is an investment that deserves careful consideration. That's why Zach's Furniture offers you only the most respected, time-tested manufacturers in the industry. Thomasville, Broyhill, Drexel, Berkland, and a whole lot more with certified, experienced home furnishing consultants and designers on staff to help you with this important decision. Never pushy, always helpful, with your needs in mind. Let Zach's help add a great new look to your home. Zach's Furniture in Boone's Creek, Bristol, and downtown Kingsport. The Colonial Heights and Great Firestone are having a spring sale on all Bridgestone and Firestone tires. We also service your brakes, perform front end and four wheel alignments, as well as oil changes and tune ups with our ASE certified technicians. We offer 90 days same as cash with approved credit and accept all major credit cards, so be sure and stop by the conveniently located Colonial Heights or Gray Firestone for the best deal around. Now what I did, I broke the hooks off of that other one I had out, so I just picked up a second one. And as you can see, these things real closely resemble a shad. And that's the main forage base of these fish in any freshwater lake. Uh, and some lakes will have LY, some will have gizzard, some thread fin, some have all three, some places got hickory shad. Whatever they've got in your lake, you'll need to find that out in your area. It varies from place to place, so there's no need me sitting here trying to talk about it. But you need to be fishing with a bait that very closely resembles the forage base that they're feeding on. Now there are times a year they'll get over on crawfish, but we're not worried about that right now. They're on these shad, they're feeding up. As you can see, it's fall of the year. They're feeding up, getting ready for winter. We're fishing on the eastern seaboard, and anytime that the temperature out here 
drops below, and I, when, I, when I talk about temperature, I'm talking about surface temperature on the water. Anytime it drops below about 40 degrees, stripers are going to become semi-dormant. And when they get that way, they're very lethargic. They don't feed, but just like every other day or so. So, and they're real tough to get at. But right now, they're getting ready for that cold weather, feeding up. They've moved up out of the deep water they've been in all summer, up into this shallow water on these flats and these points. The reason this point's holding fish, I'll tell you this right quick, they're generating energy at the dam, and it's pulling current across that point. The shad will pull up on the back sides of these points to uh, avoid the current, and when they do, of course, they're just a bonanza for those striper. Now I'm running my mouth and letting the boat get out of position. Well, let's get the boat back in position and see if we can't get another striper right quick. And get the boat back over here where I can make a cast back up this bank. That's about right, right there. And we're going to stick with that. That 12 foot strike zone is working good for us. I got a little loop in my reel then. And we want to just keep that bait in that area. If what you're doing works, don't quit. Like saying, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. loop down in there I need to get picked out. That was not a backlash or as some of my cohorts would say a professional overrun that's just a loop. I love this kind of fishing. You're up active doing something all the time. There's a lot of ways to fish for striper and over the next few weeks we're gonna do a little bit of all of it while these fish are up like this. We're gonna hit a few different lakes. We're gonna do some uh, live bait fishing. We're gonna do some top water fishing, some more crank bait fishing. Of course, my favorite way of catching them is fish with a spoon. And we're gonna cover all that over the next few weeks. So just if you if you're wondering how to cast a cast net, how to keep your bait alive, how to catch bait, oh boy, I made a professional overrun there. There's no loop to that. I'm throwing right into the wind, but that's good. See, that wind is also working to uh, push the plankton and algae up on this point, blowing it in this way. And uh, it's holding those baits in there. All right, there he is. All right. Mm. Uh-huh. Again, he's headed right out toward the middle. <laughs> Every one of these fish. This one ain't as big as the other one. He ain't pulling as hard. Got him coming my way. Come on, Mr. Striper. All right. Come up here, little buddy. Let me see you. There you go. You don't give up yet. All right. Side of his head. Stick my finger in it, y'all. So that way I can get his head back more. Mm. Oh, he's got hooks in him everywhere. Face a taxidermist out there anywhere watching this. I want you to look at all this pretty pearly white that's on the bottom of them fish. I don't know how many of these I've had mounted. And they've sent them back green or some off wall color. See how pretty pearly white that is? Work on that, boys. Not that I'm perfect, but <laughs> he's biting my thumb off. Look at him. <laughs> Come here, little buddy. Come on now. Hold still. Hot dog, I like it. And I'll come back for him when he's about 30 pounds. I'll take him when he's 10. I'd say he's about seven or eight right there. That old Rapala. Catching some striper. Let's go after another. I'm liking this. When I was a little kid, my uncle got on me one time, told me, he said, boy, you don't like that old fried chicken. I said, Unc. You see me eating it and liking it, don't you? <laughs> well, you see me catching these strappers and liking it, don't you? Get right back in there again. Uh -huh. 
There he is. Jerked into your finger. Only with pop. Ain't he a pretty one? Tell you what. I hope you picked up something fishing these with polis. Fishing for stripers in particular. We're gonna get this one in the water and then we'll say our goodbyes. There you go. Be free, you little buddy. Tell you what, one thing right quick. Be sure and check your krill limits, your size limits before you keep any of these fish. They're dead burn good eating. But be sure and put a few back so we'll have some next time. I appreciate y'all tuning in and I'll see you again next week. But until then, good luck and good fishing.